Hello and welcome to another episode of Dear Kev, the show where I give you the best, worst advice on the planet. We're here every Friday. Today's questions are from Six Brown Chicks on Twitter. Shall we begin? Yes, we can. First question. My husband got a doctor's note, COVID exposure. Now sits at home playing games all day. Won't eat. He doesn't want to pause the game to go to the bathroom, so he lays towels on the couch to pee himself. There's no more sex. He says I'm nagging him and refuses help. Advice. (laughs) This is how hoarder starts. The moment people decide that going to the bathroom is a whole thing, and I just... I would have rather not do that. It's it's step one in hoarders. Peeing in cups, in buckets, mason jars. Avoiding the bathroom is step one of hoarders. Also, leave that man alone. He got coronavirus. If he wants to piss on himself, let him piss on himself. Okay? It's not like it's getting on you. So a little pee got on some towels. It soaked it up. I'm sure you got good towels, good absorbent strength. Okay, he pees a little bit or a lot. <laughs> and then, you know, I just don't know how you get the towels. Like, the thing about a penis, if you don't, like, where is he pointing it at? If you if you don't hold it, it's just going to be like a garden hose. You could pee in your face. You know, my sons, they peed on me before. I'm trying to change their diaper. They're like, Psst, pissed on you, sucker. Ha ha. Should have wore a condom. But even my own self, sometimes I go pee and it comes out strong. I'm like, yo, what's going on? It's like, ah, we've been waiting. So is he holding his like penis and then like directing it to the towel? Is he just leaning over and peeing on a towel? Is he just letting it flow? However, whatever he's doing, it's fine. Okay, ma'am, because he got COVID-19. Do you have COVID? You don't know what it's like. Body aches, pee, the thought of getting up and walking and peeing, it's too much. Okay, you're not, you're not stricken with COVID, so you can't be judging him. I was going to make a joke, but that guy's canceled. So we're going to just move on. <laughs> Next question. Oh, no. oh, no, Josh. I'm better than that. My girlfriend of eight years saved about $10,000 to send her twins to college. Then COVID happened around the country and it shut down. I figured college was closed too. I spent the money on a motorcycle and a TV. The twins are going to college and there's no money. Advice. And a little clarifying thing. Uh, at one point, they were supposed to get married. So they open a joint bank account. The twins are not his kids. The twins have scholarships. The mom saved that extra money for books and dorm expenses. The girlfriend doesn't know the money's missing. This is hilarious. You said this woman saved money for her kids that are not yours. And y'all are not married. And you took the money for her kids. Knowing that books is expensive. Knowing that dorm is expensive. And you bought a motorcycle and a TV. This is why they say men are trash. And I, you know, it's getting harder and harder to defend us every day. I am men. Okay. I'm not take college kids money and buy a motorcycle men. But when they say we're trash, the the, the evidence overwhelmingly is saying that that's true. And I alone and Josh, we can't do this. We can't overcome all men. And when we do it, we sound like, well, there's some good cops. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear I'm a good man. Of all the trash things that we've heard on this show over the months, <laughs> spending college money, like nobody said college was over forever. College is four years minimum. If, you know, some people take five, six, seven. You knew that college was going to open up sometime, and you was like, But I want that Yamaha XJ9000. This is what I want to do with my life. How could you do that, man? Why are men? That's a thing I see on Twitter all the time. When a man does something trash, women retweet it and just say, why are men? And you don't even have to write out trash, garbage, whatever, because your brain fills it in. You bought a motorcycle and a TV with college money during coronavirus. I hope you bought it online. You can't go to the dealership. You can't go to Best Buy. And if you bought it online, the least you could have did is use honey. We all shop online. 
You've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that finds promo codes for you and automatically applies them to your card. Listen, my wife is almost addicted to shopping online at this point. Every day is a minimum three boxes. And um, thank God we found out about Honey because of this podcast and we applied it to ourselves because she don't go looking for coupons. She don't go looking for deals. I mean, she goes looking for deals, but not as many deals that are available. So thankfully, Honey has saved our lives. When you check out, the Honey button drops down. And all you have to do is click apply coupons. Watch the prices drop. Honey's found, Honey has found over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. That's capital B. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free money. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this here podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash deer. Deer. That's joinhoney.com slash deer. Deer. Next question. My younger wife says I'm boring in bed. So she's been having sex play with a female friend to test sex toys. She says there's no attraction. She's just trying out these toys before she buys. I asked to watch and now she's mad at me because I'm a pervert. Advice. <laughs> Ah, uh, can you imagine your wife saying, look, you suck in bed. You're boring. Yawn. Listen, I've got another girl. Tamika's her name. I went to AskGoody.com and I got some stuff. And if you guys were watching the Love Hour After Dark from last week, you know Goody has some things. Oh, yeah. Mine are on the way. And she's like, oh, yeah, me and Tamika, we've been doing some things. And I felt some things that I never felt. Josh, hand me that. Hand me what? Hand me that. Uh, yeah. The steamer, steamer. Yeah, sorry. I just pointed at it in my mind. Didn't realize you didn't know. Yeah, I went over and I got this. Me and Tamika, we said, oh, yeah, hot steam in my cooch. I like it. And see, you suck. You can't help me. And sometimes I put the plug part in my butt. And I feel charged up. Um, I'm sorry, man. And you're a man. You suck at the sex. And you can't do things that Tamika does for me. I'm not gay. We're just playing like house. Remember we were in kids. We we're like, oh, you want to be the mom? I want to be the dad. You just suck. And I put this little thing and I put it in the vulva and I turn it on and it's like a, it's like a coochie facial. Okay. It's like, man, this is fantastic. Your coochie will thank you. Okay, Josh, take it back. Otherwise people will think about it the whole time. <laughs> so listen, man, mind your business. She doesn't want you. You're, 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 she's never coming back home. Okay. She's now Cleo and set it off. And there's nothing you can do. Uh, just remember the good old days. Don't be sad that it happened. No, don't be sorry that it's over. What, what's the phrase? Don't be sorry that it's over. Be happy that it happened. Don't be sorry that it's over. Be happy that it happened. Next question. After dating for six months, I finally posted our picture. Boom. My inbox is full of women asking why I'm posting a pic of their man. He says they're trolling and just remove the pic. I said no. He said leave it up and I'm, leave it up and I'm out or take it down and keep me. Advice. <sighs> Respect that man's wishes. Okay, you know how women be always just like the question before, always playing around, trolling like <laughs> he's their man. I mean, what are labels for? They're for labels are for knowing what size shirt it is. That's all. You want to be together and post a picture and prove what? Are you, why'd you post it to prove that he's yours? Oh, come on. We're adults. You don't need to prove to anybody. And if he asks you to take it down, it's because you're his secret. Okay. And things that are shared with everyone, they're not secret anymore. And now you want to tell everybody about your business. What does it matter what other people think? Huh? You don't see me posting my wife on Instagram. People don't even know I'm married. Okay, I'm never bigging her up and talking about how beautiful she is because I know, right? Take it down. Respect that man's wishes. He can't be having you out there, you know, uh, letting these women get the best of him. No, 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 no. If you want to keep your relationship intact, 
trust him. You can't trust women. They lie. You can't trust yourself. You can't trust your gut, your instinct. It's all wrong. Take it down for the best, better of your relationship. Take it down and then he'll take you down because he'll be using Blue Chew. <laughs> Blue Chew, this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about something we could all use more, more right now. Sex. Great sex. Guys, now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed. Hmm? You want an erection like this? Oh, yeah. You can put this through a wall. Drywall, plaster. That's your penis. <laughs> Listen up. This blue chew will have you rock hard, strong peen. You can knock that computer down. You can blow her back out. Listen up, bluechew.com. Like the color blue. It brings you the first chew with the same FDA approved active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. I've used it before. My penis was never that strong, as strong as it was at that day. It was like, it was like, I knocked on the door with it. Melissa was laying in the room and I was like, she was like, dang, Kev, you knocking loud. What is that, your fist? And I'm like, nah, it's my meat. She was like, dang, is that Blue Chew? I said, you doggone right, it's Blue Chew. Now open the door. I put a hole through that door. You could benefit from more confidence where it counts. Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our promo code DEAR. Dear. Just pay $5 shipping. That's Again, that's B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code DEAR, Dear. to try it for free. Blue Chew is a better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you help make this podcast possible. So please be sure to use the promo code DEAR, Dear. at bluechew.com. Get the erection you deserve. Knock on the door with the helmet of your penis. Hello? Knock, knock. Who's there? Meat. Meat who? Meat inside you. With Blue Chew. <laughs> Next question. I'm a new grandma. My daughter and I have a strained relationship because of her past drug abuse. I visited my grandbaby for the first time and discovered the child's father is my ex. My daughter hooked up with him to pay me back for kicking her out. My daughter needs help, so I visit often to help her clean and babysit. My ex and I reconnected. We're still soulmates. We're in love again. He's moved into my home. My daughter threatened to keep my grandbaby from me because of this. Advice. Grandma, let's call her Mabel, her daughter, LaShondria has sex with Mabel's ex. Let's call him Bobby Caldwell. She has a baby by Bobby Caldwell. So her grandbaby would also be her child if they had gotten married. And now she's back with Bobby Caldwell. And the daughter doesn't want to keep the grandbaby. This is like a math problem. <laughs> this is like, this is like ratchet algebra. Let's, let's take what's given, Kev. Let's, let's <laughs> take what's given. <laughs> ratchet algebra is hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, I don't like math. I'm not doing this question. I don't. I, here's my advice. Y'all people need bigger circles you need better people. It's just a lot, man. It's just, a, I got nothing, Josh. I got nothing. Last question. I hit the jackpot, dating a freaky, elegant ebony queen. Smart, funny, and she cooks. She wears fantasy wigs, and that turns me on. Problem is, I've never noticed her long forehead until she got braids. Her mama has that forehead. I'm concerned about our future kids. <laughs> Listen, I have a big head. I don't have a long forehead, but I have a meaty head. I was talking to another friend of mine who's bald, and he said it takes him like 10 minutes to shave. 
every other day. And I was like, it takes me 30 minutes. And I wonder what the difference was. First, I thought he was faster than me. First, I thought, you know, he used different equipment. But the truth is, I just have more head meat to shave. You know, it's like shaving the end zone for him and a full football field for me. You never know what child you're going to get. Sometimes two really ugly people create a very beautiful person. Okay, so maybe your wife's forehead is long um, or your girlfriend's forehead is long, but your baby's forehead will be not so long. Or maybe her forehead will be even longer. And she'll look like um, aliens, you know, the alien aliens. Here's what you can't do. <laughs> you can't try to judge. You can't try to guess what someone's baby will look like. Because when you try to guess, God will freak you out, right? So with me, I'm partially ugly. Melissa's beautiful. So both of our kids are really handsome. Because you need a little bit of ugly to balance it out, okay? Now, if Melissa's beautiful and then I'm handsome, right? Kids going to be partially ugly. So I took that for us. I was like, let me bring the partially ugly, a little bit overweight to the equation, okay? And then God was like, ooh, we cannot give too much Kev. So um, I'll just give them the humor and then the dimples of Kev and then the overall body structure and abs, thinness of Melissa. Um, skin, uh, one of my kids has my skin color, actually he's a little lighter than me. And one of mine is uh, a little darker than Melissa, but they're both really handsome. So. If she has a big forehead and you're partially ugly, then that means your baby will be good, okay? Um, you just don't want two beautiful people together making babies, so you need a little discomfort in the face so that God can rectify it through the child. And um, yeah, so let her have a little forehead or it's gonna be crazy and she's gonna have a ponytail up here and it's gonna be like, damn, that baby got a high ponytail, but nobody's gonna tell you the truth about your baby being ugly, so you have that going for you. All right. It's another episode of Dear Kev. I love you. I'll be here next Friday um, answering stupid questions with even stupider answers. Patreon people, thank you. We'll be live for a little bit longer. Regular people, we'll see you next week. Peace.